Today Oban, a wee town on the far west coast of Scotland, is a tourist hotspot and a transport hub for visiting the Hebrides, with a fantastic waterfront where you can sit for hours watching the boats come in. These days you're watching fishing boats and the unmistakable Kalmak ferries coming in from the islands, but if you sat here in the 40s, odds are you'd find yourself watching the culking great battleships of the Royal Navy, because between 1939 and 1945, Oban was a vital base for the Battle of the Atlantic, the longest continuous military campaign of the Second World War. To get a better idea of what Oban was like during World War II, you can pop down to the Oban War and Peace Museum in the old Oban Times building. The museum started life in 1995 as a single exhibition to mark the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II and has grown into a thriving museum that relies on the endless hard work of volunteers. One of the real hidden in plain sight gems, the War and Peace Museum is a real treasure trove of history about the area and, unsurprisingly, Oban's role in World War II. One of the most prominent features of wartime Oban was the anti-submarine loop station at Little Ganavan, a few miles north of the town and just along from Denoli Castle. This detection system used wires laid across the seabed at the openings of ports with currents running through them which would register interference if any ship or submarine crossed the line, sending a signal back to the loop control station on the shore. This station was split into two rooms. The loop room, where trained men would watch for a signal to appear, and the binocular room, where men would keep watch to confirm if there was a ship crossing the line. If a signal was recorded but no ship seen, then an armed harbour patrol vessel would be sent out to investigate. There was little chance of accidentally catching an allied submarine as he'd always come into the harbour on the surface. The theory was that only a submarine with nefarious intentions would enter the harbour submerged. A short way up the hill, the Port War Station also monitored ships entering the harbour and would either wait for them to signal or would challenge them directly using lamps or flags before relaying the details to the loop station so the ships could be recorded in a meticulous log. Oban was just one of many towns in the west of Scotland whose role in the war, both first and second, are very rarely talked about. But as we approach the centenary of Armistice Day, now is the time to start telling these stories.